So let's take this scene and get it into LOPS. First, we need to create a LOP network. We could create one pretty much anywhere we want. We could do one right out here just by putting a LOP network down and then diving inside and starting to build a scene. Or we can use the stage here. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use the stage. Now, right away, you're going to want to go into one of the Solaris viewports here. So this is the Solaris desktop, and I have my own desktop here. It's very, very slightly modified. The only difference is I've taken the scene graph tree and I've laid it out vertically this way. I'm going to switch to that now. So I like this a little bit better because as a hierarchy, I find that having a lot of vertical space and not that much horizontal space is a bit more useful for me. So you want to make sure you're on the stage and you're here in a Solaris viewer desktop. So what's the simplest way to get everything in here? The absolute simplest way would be to use something like a scene import. If you do scene import, you'll see there's a bunch of different presets. If we want to grab our entire scene, we can just say all. Now you'll notice that it's brought everything in. If I go and select my camera here, everything looks like it did before. If you try to scrub through it, you're probably going to notice that it plays back a bit slower. And that's because there's some overhead from the translation between the SOP land and USD land here. At some point, you would probably want to bake this whole thing out into a USD file and then reread it back in. Uh, that would be much more efficient than doing a live translation, but we're focused on simplicity here, so we won't touch that. Let's take a look and see what we got. If we select something like a mountain, what you'll notice is we have these world translations here because the mountains were created at the origin and then on object level, they were moved into place. So all of those are like that. We select the mech. You're going to see that there was no translation happening on object level. Everything was happening inside on SOP level. So that's zeroed out. The camera parent is exactly as we thought before. It is animated here or moving here. There's translation values here. We know that it's animated because this is green. That tells us that this value is changing over time. And we dive inside and we have the camera. Now, if we select the camera, you're going to see that there's a whole lot of other information coming in here. We have things like the focal length, the focal distance, the f-stop. There's a bunch of different information that's coming in. And this can be really useful in case you aren't used to looking at this panel here. This is basically where you can see what the data is that's assigned to all of these objects or that's part of them. So I can select something here and I can see the values over here. Maybe there might be some metadata or something worth looking at, but for the most part, you typically are just going to want to look at this and look at the values here. Right. So that's it in terms of bringing the scene in. This node, I would take the time to go through it and make sure you understand everything that's here. I won't go through the entire thing with this node because there's a, quite a bit to go through as you toggle down a bunch of these panels, but we'll explore some things during these lessons here and try to explain some of it to make things a little bit less confusing. What you do need to know, the important things to know are if you don't want to bring everything in, you can easily select exactly what you want. So objects here, uh, essentially it's only going to be looking at the objects that are visible in the scene. So if I lock this, and I go to my object tab and I turn the mech off, you'll see the mech is gone. It's not in the scene graph and it's not in my viewer anymore. However, if I go back to my stage, I can force that object in, even if it's not viewable, right? So now the mech is forced in. All right, so I'm gonna go and make him more visible. And I can also exclude objects. So let's say I liked everything that was coming in, but I want to make sure I never bring my Mac in. Now he's excluded in there. You can filter what types of lights are brought in. So for instance, if I want just geometry coming in, well, that camera's gone because it's not a geometry object. 
However, its transform did come in. Anyway, there's a bunch of really interesting options in here. It makes it very easy to bring things in. You can also bring in materials as well. However, we did not assign materials to anything in our scene. And I would pretty much recommend that what you do is if you are going to plan to render in Solaris and Lops that you just be doing your materials here. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do them in SOPs where you can't really view what you're doing and try to judge whether the materials are set up correctly. It makes more sense to do it out here. So one thing you'll notice is that everything is grouped under this main hierarchy here, and that is the destination path. This is fine as is. If all you're doing is rendering and you have no plans to ever pass this off to another person, another department or anything, you should be totally fine. However, it's not that portable because it is part of the main stage. So a common convention would be to assign something like a shot if you want. So like shot one slash. And now you'll notice that everything gets grouped here. So you've got this shot one, and now you have everything together. One advantage to this is that shot one becomes a primitive in itself, which means that it can be targeted and moved around or things can be done to this as a whole. Um, we'll get more into this when we set up the scene ourselves in a, a little more of a specific way. Uh, you'll see we'll separate the environment into its own group and the character into its own group. And we'll be a little more specific about how we're setting things up. But the main thing to know is that all you're doing here is building a hierarchy and the hier hierarchy should suit your needs or the needs of your production. There's no real set rule you have to follow as long as you understand what's happening and what you're doing. But you can keep doing whatever you want here, like shot one slash my best work slash. So you can see you've got shot one, my best work. And now another thing you can say group all slash whatever you do. These just become transforms like one inside the other. Very simple. So I'm going to restore that to default for now. And we'll look at maybe a little more organized way of bringing in all of the different components and pieces that we have from object level. So I just started fresh in the stage here. And what I'm going to do is be a little more organized about how I'm importing things uh, for my sake. But you know, perhaps I'm working with other artists on this and want to make their lives a little bit easier as well. So I'm going to separate things out a little more organized. What we'll do is we will start with a scene import and we'll just keep it just regular scene import. And I will call this scene import environment. And I'm just going to manually select which objects I want. Now I would like my mountains and terrain, the atmosphere we're going to do separately. So just these for now. And my destination path, let's do something like this. We'll say shot slash environment. That's all going to go here. And I further am going to specify that these are all geo. So I will write geo here. Later on, when we add materials, what will happen is we'll have shot environment, and then we'll have a materials group here as well. So it's easy for us to see what is the geo and what's the materials and assign things that way. Now I'm going to put a merge down here. And we will bring in our atmosphere. So I'll use another scene import. And what I'm going to do is just copy and paste the same thing here, except instead of ENV, I'll just call this Atmos. And the object that I want to bring in is my atmosphere. Merge that in. When I select the merge, what you'll see is now we're being a little, more, little bit more organized about how we're bringing our stuff in.
we will bring in our mech now. So mech, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and it's for the sake of demonstrating. We don't necessarily need a scene import, even though we can use that. Um, I'm going to use something called a SOP import here instead. And what a SOP import does is instead of grabbing that top level object level transform and the geo from object level, it's going to actually let you target an individual SOP path inside of SOPs. Um, I'm going to call this SOP import mech. And I'm going to import the animated mech. Now we're going to get a warning here. That's OK. Don't worry about that for right now. We'll talk about that later. I want to make sure that I am importing it to the correct path. So I'm going to just copy this. We'll change that to mech. we'll merge our character over here. What this warning is about, just very, very briefly, if you hover over it, it's telling us the layer imported from SOPS has no save path set. Um, we'll get into what that means, but it's about this toggle here and whether we're choosing where this gets written to disk when we eventually write a USD file. But there's a bunch of nuances and intricacies there that are not worth going into right at this moment. Now, if I play this back, start moving around, basically you're going to see that we have our whole scene, but we don't have the camera in here right now. And that's okay for now, because I want to do this in layers. I want to work the geo in one layer, and then the camera as a layer on top of that, and then the lighting as a layer on top of that as well. It makes it a bit more organized and it makes changing and you know look deving some of this stuff significantly easier the one thing to look at is when you import the mech to go down and select any one of these body parts here scroll all, all the way down and look for velocities so just to head off some issues that happen for a lot of people later you want to check if you have intended to write point velocities to things that are moving that you want motion blur for. You want to make sure that you do have valid velocity information showing up in your scene graph here. And so you can see we actually do have values for velocity. So that generally is looking good. You might also notice there's a bunch of things in here that are green that are changing that maybe we don't really need to have changing in the scene and we can go to our I believe it is in the import data here and we can tell it which ones are not changing so we can get rid of that because when this is written to USD it's going to update this value for every frame we're gonna end up with a bigger file I've also seen some issues uh, in translating USD files written from Houdini into Unreal Engine where if this value is said like ST is the UV information. It gets changed to ST here in um, LOPS and USD, but those are UVs. If that's written as a changing value, that has messed up some of the USD stuff inside Unreal Engine. So the way around that is to go to set default values, and then we can basically select anything that shouldn't be changing. So we know that UV is not changing. Name, we don't have to worry about. That gets thrown away in here because that gets converted here. Um, what else is not changing? I think that would be the only one that I would select there. Now you'll notice that our UV information has gone to blue. So that is no longer a changing value. All right, now we will bring in the camera. So we'll do the same thing here. And we'll select cameras. And I'm just going to go like that. So we have the cam parent here. What I'd like to do is put that under shot. 
slash cameras. Okay. So now we've got atmosphere, cameras, environment, and mech. And we have now effectively rebuilt that import, but we've done it in a way which is nice and organized and will make our lives quite a bit easier.